Brother Kapow. This is Miss Kapow, and it's Freedom Friday, February 15th, 2019. Yeah, you love my Chinese love song? I, I love it. I love it. I did that on GarageBand with the iPhone. Pretty good? Yeah. I'm watching a YouTube video. Oh. It's called Chinese Love Song. For you, for Kapow listener. Oh, okay, I just offended a bunch of people. Well, it wouldn't be the first or the last time. I didn't mean to. I'm just being funny. Oh, my goodness. Oh! Okay, Mr. Powell. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed. But. But. The world is no good. It's sucky. It's no good. It's sucky. Uh, last Monday. Monday. You weren't here. You were, you were gone. I'm busy. You were busy. I did a show... And I, I talked about two stories. It was kind of like it was like a Freedom Friday regular show, but two stories about pedophilia. And I just talked about how hard it is all the time just to keep, you know, reading that stuff and dealing with the world. And you just feel, you know, lost sometimes. Yep. You're just like, when is God coming back? I did I, hear the show. It was very good. He did. And then, you know, I took it to the prophets, you know, the, and you found those scriptures from the Old Testament prophets. Mm -hmm. And how they felt the same way. And they were like, the theme was, how long, oh Lord, how long? They kept saying that. You know, and even the martyrs under the altar, you know, in Revelation. Yeah. How long, oh Lord, before you avenge our blood? How long? Mm -hmm. You really get that way. And, you know, I s still feel that way, obviously. You know, it's just a few days later. And it's just uh, a hellhole, really. And um, you just do the best you can. Yeah, our souls are vexed. Yeah, they they are vexed. It's like what Peter says about uh, Lot, that his righteous soul was vexed every day while sitting in the gate of the city. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you just see this stuff. You go, ugh. So anyway, we're going to talk about some of this yucky stuff, and hopefully it will just make us realize just how close we are, you know? Uh, it just can't. Even if the Lord didn't come back, even if you just stripped all our belief system away, society couldn't survive going this, this no. direction. I mean, Unfortunately, it's, no. No, it's just going to collapse. All right, so we're going to talk about um, the end of the American dream and some of the major cities, what's going on there. It's, it's shocking. Um, some problems that the Southern Baptist Convention mm -hmm. is having. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Tom Brady and his witch wife, you know, uh, we'll talk about that last year or something like that. I, I think it was last year. I posted something about Tom Brady. He was naked getting a massage. Uh -huh. There was a, it was a video of him and then he calls his son over and he like makes out with him in the mouth, you know? Yeah. Nasty. And I remember posting that and going, this guy's a petty, you know, he's a pedophile. And I and I got at least one person who was upset about that. You know, you know Tom Brady is the greatest thing since sliced pie and blah blah blah. So there's people who love their idols, mm -hmm. they love their celebrities, and hey, you know that's their prerogative. That's what they choose to do. If someone's that asleep, they're that far far behind on seeing what's what's going on around them. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't really help them. They, as soon as they catch up, you know, get a hold of me and I'll explain it to you. But um, this Tom Brady guy is. Uh, they're all they're all sat they're all Satanists. I keep telling people that over and over again. You got success in this world, heavy duty success. There's a reason, and it's because it's you go back to Matthew four, you know, where you show Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth. This is I'll give you whatever you want if you just bow down to me. Mm -hmm. yep. It's the same thing. And then the the last demonic story we're going to talk about is this uh, drinking urine trend. <laughs> so, I know it's everything is detestable and filthy because that's that's what demonic takeover is. It's mm -hmm. just abominations, right? Yep. So I know you have truth. I do to give out. Uh, Micah seven says, "Woe is me, for I am like the fruit pickers, like the grape gatherers. There is not a cluster of grapes to eat, or a first ripe fig which I crave." The godly person has perished from the land, and there is no upright person among men. All of them lie in wait for bloodshed, and each of them hurt, hunts the other with a net. Concerning evil, both hands do it well. The prince asks, 
also the judge for a bribe. And a great man speaks the desire of his soul, so they weave it together. The best of them is like a briar, and the most upright like a thorn hedge. The day when you post your watchmen, your punishment will come. Then their confusion will occur. Do not trust in a neighbor. Do not have confidence in a friend. From her who lies in your bosom, guard your lips. For son treats father contemptuously, daughter rises up against her mother, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are the men of his own household. Boy, that's beautiful. Man, that that even goes with last week what I was talking about on Monday. Mm-hmm. It does something. You know, I love these Old Testament prophets because, I mean, they saw the same thing, you know, that we see. Oh, definitely. They, they experience the same thing in their time, you know, right before it, it just fills up, the iniquity fills up before judgment comes, you know, and you just can't. You're just about to explode, you know. Okay, Mr. Powell, this is from... The end of the American dream. Yep. Life as you have known it will never be the same. This is a slogan. slogan. This is under economic crisis. This is written by Michael Schneider. Mm. Rats, public defecation, and open drug use. Our major Western cities are becoming uninhabitable hell holes. Yep. I haven't been to a major city in a while. Now we're the the biggest city near us is Las Vegas, and we just don't go there. Um, it doesn't do anything for us, um, so we don't go there very often. We know a lot of people that do. I used to read the local news there all the time, and it's a hell hole too. I mean, crime and it's just crazy, but. Um, I haven't been to major cities. I haven't been to L.A. in sheesh years. I know. San Francisco, I was still working last time I went there. <clears throat> Probably, what, 2007 or eight, or maybe, something like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, or before. Yeah. I think it was before. Anyway, uh, that was the last time I went there. Just, But I, unbelievable. I <clears throat> worked in a major city, Riverside. I know about homeless, homeless population. But apparently, it's not what it used to be. This isn't our grandfather's homeless encampment anymore. No. This is something else. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just to be, the, how he starts off is pretty important. He says, almost everyone that goes out to visit one of our major cities on the West Coast has a similar reaction. Those that must live among the escalating decay are often numb to it. But most of those that are just in town for a visit are absolutely shocked by the trash, the human defecation, crime, and public drug use that they encounter. Mm. Um, now, when I was on the streets, when I was a cop on the street, the city of Riverside and Long Beach, you had your homeless, um, but they weren't defecating publicly like in front of you where you couldn't do anything. And they certainly weren't doing drugs <clears throat> where they can get arrested. That was still against the law back then, but apparently it's not anymore. So there's, there's a problem. Once upon a time, Snyder continues, our beautiful Western cities were the envy of the rest of the world, but now they're shining examples of America's accelerating decline. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here's the deal. The thing is, these very liberal cities, they, and they are, they're very liberal. They, they, they serve Lucy, Lucy the loser mm-hmm. in the sky with trannies. That's who they bowed down to. And they do his agenda, and it's always a loser agenda, just like socialism, any kind of ism. It's always a loser agenda. And these idiots, these libtards, these Satanists, think that they're being so liberal and so cool, and uh, you know everybody's going to follow you know our path, and we're going to set people free. And what they do is just destroy themselves and their own cities. And they're a laughing stock from anybody else that has half a brain. Now, that's the truth. Yeah. Um, he goes on, he says, the worst parts of our major Western cities literally look like post-apocalyptic wastelands. And the hordes of zombified homeless people that live in those areas are too drugged out to care. The ironic thing is that these cities are not poor. In fact, San Francisco and Seattle are among the wealthiest cities in the entire nation. Wow. So if things are falling apart this dramatically now, how bad will things get when economic conditions 
really start to deteriorate. And they will, and they are. So first he, uh, he starts off and he looks at Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. I haven't been there in years. Uh, Miss Capow, do you remember? I don't even know what year we went. We went to um, Huntington Library. Oh, yeah. Botanical Gardens. Mm, that Real, would be way before 2000. Yeah, um, up there in Pasadena. But I, I got lost. I was on GPS, and it sent me somewhere else. And I don't know where I ended up, in East L.A. or something like that. But I was shocked because I was looking at the house. We were driving down the street. I was looking at the housing, and it looked like I was in a third-world country. Yeah. I honestly, it, it looked just like Tijuana when you visit Tijuana, Mexico. It was unbelievable. I'd never seen anything like it. It was quite... Uh, Quite uh, shocking, yeah, shocking, yeah. And this was years ago. So uh, anyway, in Los Angeles, there's officials at Los Angeles City Hall. They're really considering ripping out all of the carpets in City Hall because rats and fleas are running riot in the halls. <laughs> Nasty. Yeah. Uh, a motion was filed by Council President Herb Wesson to enact the much needed makeover amid a typhus a typhus outbreak in the downtown area because these fleas are biting people people are getting sick yuck can you imagine i know that? i guess an employee contracted a deadly bacterial disease at work so now they got to do something so i mean that's how filthy it is mm. and so people from all over the world are drawn to LA because of what they have seen on television but as Snyder writes, it's truly a filthy, filthy, filthy place. Gross. A number of homeless has been rising about 20% a year. Public drug use is seemingly everywhere, and there are mountains of trash all over the place. Needless to say, rats thrive in such an environment. And the epic battle that one L.A. journalist is having with rats mm. was featured in L.A. Times. Um, and he goes on about rats everywhere. So uh, that was that's L.A. Apparently, there's also filthy homeless in, encampments under um, in Salem, Oregon. Yeah, amid the trash, human despair, and anguish, one weeping woman prepared to leave the most recent place she knows as home mm. without knowing where she'll go uh, because of the rats. So you just can't stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an outreach worker said there's anger, mental illness, drug use, and human frustration boiling over at times everywhere one looks, yet uh, it was a rat infestation and concern about human health that prompted the city of Salem to move the campers out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is part of the Agenda 21 um, plan, you know, to get people out of the um, rural areas and whatnot and kind of gather them all into one place. Yeah, it's true. Put them in the cities so they could have this kind of lifestyle. It could be controlled, could be watched, mm -hmm. could be fed, could be on government dole, right? Yep. Get, get the food stamps, get the government cheese, get the government housing, and you just the slave race. I well, like hurting these people. <sighs> yeah. Kind of like cattle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, apparently, the homeless in camp. Campments all around this country are just on a scale that's never been before. Mm -mm. They say there's half a million Americans are homeless, continues to grow, uh, and communities are, are forced to make tough decisions. Now, check this out. Those who may live in Colorado or Denver, we have family that, that live uh, in the Denver metropolitan area. Uh, or if you know people in there, now check this out. This is amazing. I wonder if people, I wonder if our own family, Miss Capow, knows about this law. Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, Snyder writes, if you are into public defecation, you will be happy to learn that Denver just made it legal. The Denver City Council has voted unanimously to decriminalize a number of offenses. Folks, you're going to love this including defecating in public, also urinating in public. It's no longer a crime in Denver to take a big old steamer on the sidewalk and just urinate in a public fountain. It's not, it's not criminal. I'm not making it up. Can you imagine this? The other thing, now this, this would really irk me if I lived there or had a shop there or something. It says camping on public 
or private land mm. without permission. It's legal. So there's no trespassing laws. Seriously. So that means a, a, a hobo, a hobo could just come to your house and live in your doorway and piss and poop on your sidewalk, and he's not trespassing because it's not against the law to do any of those things on your property. You, this is socialism, folks. Mm -hmm. This this is where this is Marxism, which is Satanism. This is where it leads. It's the destruction of all sibilants of humanity and civ civility. Yeah. Panhandling is no longer a crime. So you're walking down Denver, they can just like hassle you for money and do everything they want, and it's not a crime. Also, laying across or lying across public rights of way, such as sidewalks, is not a crime. So as you walk down Denver, they can hassle you for money. They can, you can step in their poop. You can slip in their urine. And you can step over their, their bodies as they lay across sidewalks. Yeah. And if they're, they're doing it on your private property, it's, it's not against the law. Mm. Now, to me, to me... You know, I don't know how people are in Denver, Colorado, but to me, this is a setup for yeah. people getting hurt. Mm -hmm. If you know, if you catch my drift, yeah, because uh, there's there's some people who are not going to put up with that. Well, sure, yeah. Uh, he's a Democrat. Oh, what a shock! He's he's a socialist, Democrat, socialist, left wing mayor. His name is Michael Hancock. Hmm. And other left-wing city officials explained the new ordinances. Now, this is amazing. I'm sure if these people had homeless people living in their yard, they wouldn't like it. Oh, they wouldn't like it. No. No, that's probably why they don't live in Denver. They probably live on the outskirts. Yeah. But listen to their explanation of, of why they decriminalized all this behavior. They say the, the new ordinances or the decriminalization of, of these acts are designed to protect immigrants, mm. legal and the other kind. What the heck does that mean? Legal immigrants, that means somebody who's... You're illegal or legally. Came here legally. And I don't think if you came here legally, you're on the streets. Mm -mm. You're not a homeless person. If you came here legally and you had the finances to come here and go through the classes and assimilate, you're not a homeless vagrant. Mm -mm. And then it says legal and the other kind. What, what other kind is there? Illegal. Illegal, but they won't say it. They won't say that they're here illegally. And so they're here illegally, and then we'll go ahead and decriminalize all the criminal behavior. So you could just be illegal. You could be lawless in your whole life. I mean... What kind of society have they created over there? Mm. So the city officials explained that new ordinances are designed to protect immigrants, legal and the other kind, from, quote, unintended consequences. Ah. You know what the unintended consequences are? Getting arrested for pooping on somebody's yard or for panhandling or being a vagrant. These consequences were fines and longer jail terms, as has been customary in most places for violating the behavioral norms of civilized American society. Wow. So what they just said is in Denver, we're no longer going to punish people for violating the behavioral norms of civilization. I see, I see problems. Do what they wilt. Yeah, I see problems because somebody's going to step on somebody's poop and and, and there's going to be a hobo there just laughing at him, peeing on your car. And somebody's going to somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Because people can only take so much. Wow. That's sad. Um that's just sad all the way around. Yeah. You know in San Francisco, they're famous for the piles of human poop uh -huh. on the street during a seven day seven day stretch last summer we talked about this mm -hmm. Sixteen thousand official complaints about human feces on the yeah. sidewalk in a seven day period sixteen thousand, dude that's crazy that is crazy that's just nuts yeah um i guess there you could just walk around and people 
I'll just shoot it up right in front of you. Yep. The police can't or won't do anything about it. Yeah. Um, they'll just shoot it. Now, this is a stat I didn't know, but I guess in San Francisco, they actually gave out free syringes to yes. drug addicts. Yes. They it's handed a out a gram. 5.8 million free needles in yes. 2018. Yes. 5.8 million. Now what they were trying to do is is spend more money to try to get the syringes back to prevent the spread of AIDS and everything. But they don't. They spent an extra $1.8 million last year to get the needles back that they gave away. Yep. They handed out about 2 million more syringes than they got back. And now those ones they don't get back full of AIDS and hepatitis B and everything are washing up on the shores. Nasty. Because these people are lawless. They're vagrants. They're on drugs. They're mentally ill. Come on. Yep. I guess Inside Edition ran a test to see how long stereo equipment would last in a parked car because the crime is just off the hook, right? So their test car was quickly broken into. And then they discovered that the actual camera crew, their own vehicle, had been busted into as well. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. So, you know, the article goes on. I would suggest, uh, you, you know, you read it if you're interested. It's on our Facebook page. End of American Dream. He talks about all these cities. Unbelievable. It really is sad. I just... Unbelievable. But it's a good thing we have the uh, the organized uh, Christian uh, religion. Huh. Stopping it. <laughs> we got some good organized Christian religion. Mm-hmm. This is from Fox News. Hundreds of Southern Baptist leaders, volunteers, accused of sexual misconduct at bombshell investigation. Oh, no. Kid you not. It's not just the Catholic Church. I know. What a shock. You know? Years ago, uh, we discovered a Calvary Chapel pedophile ring. Mm-hmm. You know? That was back in 2011. Yeah, and they did the same thing, just kept it real quiet. Oh, yeah. They protect their own. Hundreds of leaders and volunteers within the Southern Baptist churches across the nation have been accused of sexual misconduct against young churchgoers for decades. And then many of them quietly returning to church roles even after being convicted for sex crimes. And this was a bombshell investigation done by the Houston Chronicle and the San Antonio Express News. And they found that over the last 20 years, about 380 Southern Baptist church leaders and volunteers have faced credible accusations of sexual misconduct. And of those, roughly 220 were convicted, Ms. Kapow, wow. convicted of sex crimes or received plea deals. See. In cases involving more than 700 victims in all the report found. Come on, this isn't speculation. This is fact. Mm-hmm. They These numbers aren't saying... 220 were convicted? That's too many. Yeah. That's way too many. Young men and women serving the Baphomet Baptist religion. These allegedly. Are, yeah, these are people in, lead, in, in spiritual leadership. Yeah, that's who's, who's doing it. Yeah. They did everything from exposure to pornography to rape and impregnation at the hands of church members. Yeah. Uh, the Southern Baptist Convention largely treated the accusations as isolated issues, and they took, and this is typical, an out of sight, out of mind mentality. Mentality, mm-hmm. yeah. Even amid growing pressures to create a registry, so the accusations wouldn't disappear as alleged perpetrators move from city to city. So they got caught in one city, they go, they pastor another church somewhere Just like else. The the uh, Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. They all protect each other. It was a six-month investigation uh, involved cross-examination. Hundreds of uh, allegations were corroborated by court documents and prison records. Oh, my gosh, my gosh. Uh, Many accusers said the experiences of sexual assault at the hands of church officials that they had trusted had changed their lives forever. I can imagine. Here's a gal named Debbie Vasquez. Mm-hmm. And she says she was 14 years old when her pastor at a Southern Baptist church in Texas had first molested her. Wow. Her pastor old. molested a 14-year-old girl. 
Then she said the married pastor continued to assault her for years afterwards and then ended up getting her pregnant when she was 18. Now, years later in 2006, she sued that pastor. His name is Dale Dickey Amex. Amex. A M Y X. Dickey Amex was playing with his Dickey at church. You know what I'm saying? Dickey Dale. That's a good Dick. That's a good name for a pastor, Dickey. Let's just call him Dick. So this Dick reportedly admitted in a deposition that he had sex with this girl when she was a teenager. See? And he, in fact, was the father of her child. Mm-mm. But guess what he claimed? It was consensual. She wanted it. She wouldn't be at the altar praying if she didn't want it. Yeah. And then it says as of 2016, he's still listed as the pastor of that church. See? <laughs> That shouldn't be. She wanted it. She wouldn't have come to the baptism if she didn't want me, Dickie. I'm so good looking. This, this, you know what I mean? Mm. Come on. Judgment will begin with the house of God. Will it not, Miss Capel? Yep. There's a scripture about that mm-hmm. somewhere. Um. Uh, oh, First Peter four seventeen. There you have it. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't consider this Baptist, these Baptist denomination houses of God by any stretch of the imagination. But the world sees them as such. Yeah. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, and get that in your head, the righteous scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Ooh. Yeah. Peter, you being mean, Peter. Let's see, what else? What else? So the guy's still uh, listed as a pastor of the church. Dickie is still playing with his Dickie at the Baptist church. Oh, and when they tried to reach the church for comments, it was unsuccessful. Oh, go figure, go figure. Yeah, yeah. So in 2008, this gal, Vasquez, went to uh, Indianapolis to share a story. She went to plead with officials at the Southern Baptist Convention to implement changes. Uh, mm, crickets, at, crickets. For, yeah. And uh, to prevent future sexual assaults. But days later, they reportedly rejected almost every proposed reform, and the alleged abuse continued. So anyway, what they do is they do local church anonymy type of thing. Um, It's a term, I guess, frequently used whenever reforms have been proposed. Local church autonomy is what they say. Mm -hmm. That these local bodies kind of govern themselves, and we don't really have anything to do with it. So if they want to molest children, I mean, there's not a lot we can do about that. You know, praise the Lord. Send us your tithes. Send us your money. Because you don't want God's curse on you. Oh, gosh. Is this an amazing? Now, Disgusting. to go with that story, this ain't really a story. This is something that popped up on my Facebook feed. Mm. And it was an, it's a sponsored ad. Yes. And you can see it at our Facebook, Fifth Hook Media Facebook page. If you want to see this, it's a sponsored ad from some yahoos called the Parable Group. <laughs> and here's what it is. It says, find out the average salary for pastors, check mark. Make sure your team is fairly compensated. What? Mm. And what they're offering free to you is a church salary guide. It's the 2019 church staff salary guide. Discover the key factors to fairly pay in your staff. You know what they what that means. They don't they know no one's gonna read this to fairly pay their staff. They want to see how much money they're worth in their church work. Mm-hmm. How much How much money do I get as a pastor? It's nothing but a job. These people are hirelings, folks. Mm-hmm. These are hirelings. Jesus talked about hirelings. Right, Ms. Capel? Yes, are hirelings going to get in the kingdom of God, Ms. Capel? No. Not a shot in hell. You know, Dickie, Dickie Amex, or whatever his name is, 
Dicky the Dick. He ain't going. But I know where he's going to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got that right. And I hope there's a little hotter section for someone like that because he's so deceptive and he did it under the gain of the gospel of Christ. What a dicky dick. That's disgusting. It, it is. It really is. I just... Uh... Let's take a short commercial break at uh, 3033, <gasps> and then we'll be back. No kidding. Yeah. How many of you remember the story contained in the book of Acts, chapter 19, where there were seven sons of Sceva, and they were trying to cast out a demon because they saw the apostle Paul doing great miracles through God. So they tried to do the same thing. So they go up to this guy who's demon-possessed, and they say, we adjure you by this Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. Yeah. And guess what the evil spirit did? The evil spirit answered them and said to them, hey, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, but who are you? And guess what? The man that had the demons jumped on him, beat the heck out of him, subdued him, overpowered him, and they literally fled out of the house naked and wounded. Wow. Guess why? Guess why? Because they did not go to Amazon.com and buy Demons in My Marriage Bed. A true story of spiritual warfare. The book is not about you being married or single. The book is about dealing with demonic forces. And you need to know how to do that today more than you ever have for your own life and for those around you. The book is a training manual and there's training in there that will teach you how not to be the sons of Sceva and get beat up by demons. It will give you the tools for you to be recognized by them because they'll know that you're exercising the authority that is given to you through Christ. You need to get this book. Ms. Capel. That was quick. So quick, so quick, so quick. That was really quick. Yeah, did you know that uh, Tom Brady's wife is a witch? Yep. I, I never did like her anyway. She just was weird. He's weird. He's creepy. You see this doughy creepy. guy? He's 41 years old. He's all doughy. You tell he never lifts a weight or nothing. And yet he's like... That's like, yeah, because he's not real. He's not... Yeah. He gets his power from the dragon. Okay. This is from CBS Boston. Tom Brady says superstitious which is another word for witchcraft. Gis- How do you pronounce her name? Gishley? Giselle? Gazelle. Gazelle, like a gazelle, like a giraffe, yeah. like an animal. Mm-hmm. That's the stupidest name I've ever heard of. Gazelle. It's spelled Gisely. Like Giselle Italy, Gisely from like Italy. That. How about her last name? Bunchen? Yeah, well. What kind of Bunchen is that? What the? Anyway. Bunchen. Gazelle Bunchen has him using... This is in quotes, protection stones, and it works. So anyway, um, Tom Brady, the quarterback for the New England Patriots, I think he has six Super Bowl rings and, you know, all this this witchcraft crap that he, power he got. Uh, Six-time Super Bowl winner Tom Brady, as he had his playoff beard shaved off for charity. Now, that's another, a whole other story. It's Gillette who makes razors, right, mm-hmm. for men to shave their face. Well, now they're doing this whole goddess worship crap and uh, the demasculation of the man. You know, mm-hmm. let's just shave your face and look like a 14-year-old, you know, baby or whatever. Um, so that's a whole nother story. So this idiot's doing that agenda, of course, because if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. I'll give you six Super Bowl rings, right? Mm-hmm. So um, Tom Brady, as he had his uh, beard shaved off for charity on Thursday. He reflected on how his wife... Gazelle Bungeon has used some unconventional methods to help him stay so successful. Oh. And as he was in the chair, the barber was shaving him. He was rattling off his stupid gums. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here's what he says. He doesn't, cool. he doesn't appear to be the sharpest pencil in the box. No, no. Just saying. Yeah, because you would think as you're doing that, you wouldn't be rattling that kind of crap off. Mm-mm. But he's, he's, you know, he's a shill. Yeah. He quote, he says, you know, I've learned a lot from my wife over the years. Well, yeah, because she wears the pants. She's running your show. She's your handler. Mm -hmm. I know that. Everybody with discernment knows that. He's just a a weak man. 
Brady said, leaning back in a barber's chair at the shaving headquarters of Boston, he says, she's so about the power of intention Mm -hmm. and believing things that are really going to happen. What do you mean by that? That's witchcraft talk right there. That is witchcraft talk. Oh, it gets worse. He goes on, he says that his wife always makes a little altar for me at the game because she just wills it so much. Mm. And this little altar is complete with pictures of his children (laughs) who you know are being sacrificed sexually to Lucy Loser in the Sky with trannies. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Wow. So he says it right there. So everybody can get all mad. Oh, you're talking about Tom Brady. He's a man. You know, I don't care. I mean, if you're that asleep, yeah. I just can't help people that are just asleep under a rock. Mm-mm. This guy, I saw him being a pedophile. Of course he's a pedophile. Of course he's sacrificing this chill. That's what these Satanists do. The, the, the more they do, the more filth they do, the more power and fame and money they achieve. It's, it's all relational. It's all conditional. With Lucy Loser. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's not because this guy's talented. It's because he has witchcraft on his side. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody who's famous. And then he goes on, he says, and I have these little special stones and healing stones and protection stones. And she has me wear a necklace and take these drops she Ooh. makes. This is pharmacaea. This is sorcery, folks. This is mm-hmm. what the Bible calls... Pharmacaea, the, the the cutting of the root of the herb. It's sorcery. It's witchcraft. She makes little drops. And he, and he and she makes him wear this necklace and protection stones. And then he says, I say all these mantras. Mantras. Oh he says, and I stopped questioning her a long time ago. I just shut up and listen because I'm a because I'm a lady boy. I'm a lady boy. That's what you call a ladybug. He's a lady boy. Brady said he first thought this kind of is kind of crazy, but it worked. About four years ago, he says we were playing the Seahawks, and she said, "You better listen to me. Mm. This is your year, but this is all the things you're going to have to do to win." Mm. But he didn't say. He didn't say what those things were. He says, hey, you can imagine what those were. Probably eating feces and dead bodies and necromancy and sacrificing your children to Molech, Baal worship. And he says, and I did all those things. And by God, you know it worked. Wow. Because witchcraft works, doesn't it, folks? It works. Satan will give you all those kingdoms of the earth if, if you fit his agenda. So Bunchen, Gazelle, the, 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 the Gazelle, also <laughs> predicted that in 2015 that uh, that would not be Brady's year. He remembered, and sure enough, that season for the Patriots ended disappointingly. Mm. Uh, but early this year, Brady asked if he had a chance to win it all, and he got the answer he was seeking. Here's what she said. She said, yeah, but you're going to have to do a lot of work. And you're really going to have to listen to me. So, man, I listened to her, Brady said. And then Bunchen was right, of course, again. Now, here's how the article ends. So if there's any doubt in your mind that I'm making this up, here's how it ends. Quote, she said, you're lucky you married a witch. I'm just a good witch. End of quote. Disgusting. That's right from, that's right from uh, the horse's satanic mouth, folks. Mm-hmm. Wow. Isn't that something? Well, I know. And it's, witchcraft is so blatant now. I mean, they just talk about it like like it's nothing. It's like go- it's just so normal. Yeah, it's like going to the store, you know. Mm-hmm. You got to listen to me. You got to buy this cheese, and you got to buy this kind of bottled water, and you'll be okay. Okay. You know, you got to set up this altar, wear the stone, smoke these herbs. Jeez. I mean, and it's just so common now. Yeah. That's... That's where we've come. Well, the, the fact that an article like this on CBS Boston, or that he's that he's he's blabbing his gums while being shaved on national television, mm-hmm. um, would even would even get out without you know, know the networks and the handlers rushing to go. Whoa, no, Don't no, 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 
You know, yeah, you're going to ruin your all American image that, you know, you're a Southern Baptist, you know, uh, pedophile. Mm-hmm. Nah. It doesn't matter anymore. This no. is who they are, and they're not going to hide it. No. You know what? Um, I've done a lot of stuff, Miss Capel. But one thing I have never done, I've never done it, is I've never drunk my own urine. Oh, and please, don't ever tell me that you do. Cause... I don't think that's going to happen anytime uh, soon. No, 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 no. Now, no. I can pretty much guarantee you. No, I don't need no healing stones to tell me. <laughs> Drinking urine, can it help? That's from Fox News. I'm not, I kid you not. Urine therapy is making a comeback, Miss Capel. From its century old origins. What does that mean? Really? Witchcraft. That's satanic. Ugh. Just like pooping on the sidewalk, decriminalizing the poop on the sidewalk, smearing feces on yourself, eating dead bodies, pedophilia, bodily fluids. All it's it's satanic. It's it's an abomination. Mm-hmm. Anything that goes against God's law is what Lucy the loser transvestite tranny in the sky will do. Because mm-hmm. this is a, a urination, like defecation, is God's way of our making our body to get ri- rid of waste. Yeah. To get rid of it. Yeah. To, you know, because if it stays in your blood, you get sick, right? So it right. Get rid- gets rid of it. And here you are, these people putting it back in their bodies and saying that it's good for them. Yeah. That's stupid. Totally against nature. Just like Paul writes, these people that just, they go against nature. (laughs) It's incredible, huh? Incredible. The therapy involves drinking your own or maybe somebody else's urine or to apply it topically for healing purposes. Really? Really? But how can something... Of po- how can poison yeah. make you better? Well, see now, now you're now you're you're. Ta- I'm just asking. Yeah, now now you now you're using logic. You're asking you're asking a very logical question, saying it's a waste product, it's poison on your body. How could that putting that on my face or drinking it be good? But many medical prof- professionals say it's not the secret to good health. <laughs> I could imagine. Uh. Um, <laughs> According to one case study, this was in the uh, Journal of Clinical and Aesthetic Dermatology. <coughs> yeah. Urine therapy has been used in the past by ancient Greeks and Egyptians. Mm. Uh, do I need to say any more? What do you think they were doing? Currently, the practice is popular in Asia, South America, and the Middle East. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to help. Conditions of acne and cancer. And, yeah. Does anybody here want to go to live in Asia, South America, and Middle East? Mm-mm. But you're in your, no. Uh, that should make you question. Hey, How, people out here don't even like to eat gluten in their food. <laughs> exactly. It's not gluten free. But I'll put urine on my face. However, experts are skeptical. Since the therapy doesn't have much research to back it up, I wonder. Uh, According to the study above, drinking urine or applying it topically can have harmful effects. Even when left outside the body, the urine can quickly attract harmful bacteria. (laughs) Because it's it's waste. It's piss. There was a they did a case study. There was a 16 year old uh, idiot boy, total idiot, total brain dead. uh, You know, just an eraser head. (laughs) He attempted topical urine therapy for acne. Uh, because his mother, who was even more of an eraser head, pressured him to do so. Oh, for the love of pizza. Yeah, your own oh, mother said, goodness. here, put put your piss on your face, son. It's good for your acne. I read it in Women's Magazine. Yeah. It has to be true. Yeah, you know what? Not witch hazel. Not not like an, you know, a yeah. medicated soap. Not, not isopyl like- alcohol. No, urine. Urine. So. <laughs> The technique worked for a while. Sure it did. But eventually it inflamed it further after the boy tried using stored urine for convenience. Because yeah, every time he wanted to wash his face, he had to go to the bathroom at the same time. Ah, it's, it's nasty. Tough. Good. So doctors confirmed that his skin had amounts of bacteria well above the normal skin flora. <laughs> 
And then they started him on a prescription treatment regimen that healed the inflammation within a few months. How embarrassing. That huh? is. This like, son, how did you get that face? How, mm-hmm. how's your, why does your face look like, you know, it was on fire, put out with an ice pick? Well, I was putting, my, I was putting piss on my face, drinking a little bit of it, bathing in it. I don't know why I don't have a girlfriend. I don't know it's dead. Um, it's a bizarre alternative treatment. It's not uncommon, Ms. Kapow. I know. I've never been at anybody. I hope I never do. Yeah. Because I think you'll be able to smell them. Well, yeah. 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 However, uh, there's studies. <laughs> there was a study on 41 patients with overactor bladder disorder, or disorder mm. overactive. And it revealed that uh, there was a lot of... Uh, Bacteria in the uh, the urine. Well, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I know. That's not I, shouldn't surprise anybody. I didn't. Uh, yeah, you don't have to do a study to tell me that. It's that's like saying you know you, you could go eat your own poo. It's really good for you. It stinks. Puts, puts the, yeah, it stinks, really? but it's really good for you. It's like really, you know, how come we didn't do this years ago? It's amazing. They're saving so much money. Yeah. Um. Fuji, fuji. Yeah. So there's a lot of bacteria in your urine. It goes on and on and on. Uh, the acne uh, studies, uh, anyway, it just, uh, basically they're saying, uh, we don't know, but we don't think this is true. We don't think it really works. The U.S. Army Field Manual, okay, advises against drinking urine for survival purposes. Yeah, because urine contains harmful toxins and salt in concentrated amounts. So even the U.S. Army says if you're a survivor, if you're dropped over there and you're you're behind enemy lines, you yeah. got to make it back. Don't eat. Don't drink your own urine uh, because these waste products are highly concentrated. They could place undue stress on the liver and kidneys. Well, yeah, because they already filtered it once. Yeah, and the kidney said I don't want it, and you're putting it back in your yeah, system. Oh, they got to well. filter it again. I mean, it's just common sense. I mean, right? Just common Which sense. Which obviously we are lacking nowadays. Uh, Anyway, bottom line, urine therapy may not be the wonder cure people want it to be. There just isn't enough information to prove its efficacy. However, 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 what little research there is suggests that therapy could actually be dangerous. Besides, there are four more pleasant ways to maintain good health than drinking urine or putting it on your skin. That's pretty Thank sad. You. They had to do a whole study on it. Yeah, and this was written by Dr. Manny Alvarez. Hmm. Took a doctor, a medical doctor. He went to ten years of schooling or more, just to tell you don't drink your own pee, <laughs> unless unless you live in Denver or San Francisco or something, especially Denver, where it's legal to pee wherever you want, whenever you want, and uh, bathe in it. Yeah, and probably it's legal to bathe other people in your urine, and they can't do nothing about it because it's not illegal to pee on somebody's pant leg. Well, you know, yeah, you're a hobo. They're walking by. You wouldn't give them a dollar. They're going to pee on you. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, that's all the good news I have. Well, thank you. Well, let's call it a day. Let's call it a day. Ciao, babies. Here we wait for judgment day. Eyes were told to watch and pray. The firmless stand Waiting for that son of man No my trouble or dismay Waiting for the judgment day Sun and moon will soon go dark
pray. Help me, Lord, to firmly stand. Waiting for that son of man.